first part here is what you've heard many times, basic, simple. Uh, energies come to and through the body. When we have something to do, we get more energies. Or if we're under pressure, that calls up more energies. Okay. So these days, it's more like we're under pressure a bit. Uh, so energies are coming to and through the system, personal body system. The opening is to make a little more room because the more energies are more. So a little more room so the more energies can flow through unimpeded. And allowed then, the energies are allowed then to do their proper job, which is to balance us internally, uh, to mix up, if you would, uh, a better level of yourself, of your body, of your character. Uh, Bobby's a character, Robert's a character, Nato is a character, Sensei's a character. Uh, so I'll interchange those words sometimes, body or character. The first problem with that basic simple is we weren't taught as children uh, about incoming energies, not really. Uh, they talked a lot about the mm, reaction to the energies. Like, oh, you're getting nervous, uh, or you're excited, or you're whatever. Uh, those are secondary words. Uh, stage fright is a secondary word. Uh, energies were moving through the system to enhance that character and not catching the earlier of the energies, the finer of the energies, we only talk about the reaction to the energies. Doctor, my hair is standing up on end. What's wrong? That's secondary of the energies, not the primary of the energies themselves. You don't have to, in a certain way, understand or be intellectual about this. Uh, in fact, knowing about will interfere with the actual allowing experience of energies uh, that are flowing through the system. So where are we on basics? Settle a bit. Sense of opening. Easy. That's when I say easy the eye. Easy that part of you that worries about everything, that tries to understand everything that tries to hang on to it, pinpoint it, easy that eye, easy. You don't have to uh, be aware a certain way. You have to experience, allow an experience. Okay, so settling, opening, and the energies will begin to flow through. Where are we? Simple basic, you've heard it before but I think there's more pressure on us these last, or this last week and building daily. Uh, so I know you're getting more energy. You, know? uh, you think, oh, oh, where's my paycheck gonna come from? You're getting energies. Uh oh, what am I gonna do if I can't go to work and hang out with my coworkers? You're getting energy. Uh, what am I gonna do with this stay at home time? You're getting energies. Okay, so there should be more uh, energy floating around this week uh, than normal. Uh, I think we can do questions and uh, uh, to facilitate. Uh, so for this first simple basic of settle, open, energies are beginning to flow through the system. Anything on that? I'll ask a question. Yeah. Uh, most people are uh, watching this sitting down. 
Mm -hmm. What sort of Aikido practice can you come suggest that will help us open and settle that we can do sitting down? Okay. Uh, one that I always liked, I think can fit in with your question, easy, settle, open. And those energies facilitate a body that stands. So it's already mixing up a stander earth. Okay. Easy. I settle down for the next beat of it. Open. And the energies come up and create a better stander. I feel fuller. I actually do. I sense feel fuller. Easy. Settle down for the next beat. Easy. Settle down. Ah. And the next beat of energy, boom, there it is. It flows through the system. I feel fuller. I feel stronger. I have much more back. I can feel that. I'm experiencing these energies. My arms feel a little stronger. They feel like they want to move back there. They're doing the movement. I didn't tell them to move. The energies are doing the movement here. Uh, so, so sitting, sitting standing, standing, I always thought was a simple one and very effective and uh, easy to play with because it's so distinct. Energies create a better stander. Er. So, Sensei, if you would, and everybody, if we were in the dojo and Sensei were telling us that, we'd all try it together with him. So in the privacy of your own home, you can mute your video if you want. But if Sensei, could you lead us in a few repetitions of that, please? Uh, okay, I lost you a bit because Koch is running through the room here. Uh, could, you, could you lead the group in a few repetitions of this exercise? And I'm asking everyone to follow along with you. Okay, well, do it. <laughs> Easy, settle a bit, settle a bit. I want to get a little bit low or lower, a sense of lower. Don't scrunch down. I didn't mean that. A sense of lower. From that lower level, energies will start to come up from there, and they come up through the body standing. Okay? And you'll notice some strengths, and you'll notice some weaknesses. Okay? We sit back down, settle, open a little bit better, sense of opening a little bit more, a little bit deeper. And that next batch of energies, like waves on the ocean beach, here comes the next wave. And that waves through me from under and, and feeling myself, experiencing myself. I feel a little straighter. So the energies help me to be a standerer and to be a straighter standerer. Uh, let's ask anybody. Are they feeling a little better as a, as a person that stands? No, everybody is feeling weaker. They're all yes. muted, so. Yes, sir. <laughs> I'm sorry? They what? They're all muted. Oh, they're all muted. Don't talk. <laughs> so Don't they, talk may take a minute. Everybody, everybody has to mute sad. or we get an echo. <laughs> I wish I had that in class or I mute everybody. <laughs> You know, it feels nice to just kind of collect here. I, I know there's always been a worrying about the, the virus and the thin and the money and the, and I'm here. Yeah. Okay. So the energy is coming up through the system, mixing up this. Uh, there's other things other than being a standerer. Okay. Uh, he feels more his, himself which is different than the corona out there. I feel this. Now to think about corona, I have to click out into a different realm, which I don't want to deal with right now. So Kenny, that was good. It's like, oh, I myself am more here feeling myself. And already that, that helps in being present with the craziness of the world. Yeah. Uh, uh, Lauren, was that, uh, want me to sit stand here for a while or is that good enough? So, no, so Sensei, this is, this is Dennis. It's like, uh, no, I think um, I feel my ground expanding. When I just do this standing up exercise, I can feel yeah. my, I just feel more grounded. It's a bigger. 
I feel bigger. Yeah. The, uh, and that's why grounding is important for us, what's important for our sensei, um, so that as we settle with that sense of going lower, you get to touch a different level of ground. And each level of ground is inherently better than the previous. And for lack of words, supplies more finer energy for the job of standing and being more myself character here, a la Kenny. Uh, so ground, yes. Um, so ground, the different levels of ground. So the first ground here is this uh, rug or this wooden floor. That's what I start with. Then as I settle, I sense uh, a deeper ground. I sense there's something uh, under this wooden floor that is substantial to me. I, I sense feel that. Do not go into mental awareness. Do not go there. This is in this realm of experience. And feeling that ground, hanging out with it, double checking the openness so the energy from that level can flow through. See, this is a different level and I'm starting to smile. I've got no reason to smile. Nobody brought me a glass of wine. But the energies, the added energies that were here also have a quality of joy or light, a light happiness. How do I know? I suddenly started to smile. I didn't think about I wanted to smile. It just happened. That's the reaction to the energies through the system. So yes, um, Dennis, base, base is very important. Sensei, that's, that's one of your teachings that um, I try to remember almost daily. And it's also a feeling of connection. So it's the grounding and that connection to that deeper settle. Like, you know, my legs are starting way below the ground. And, yeah. and all of that flows up through the ground through me. Yeah. So it's a longer connection, a bigger connection. Yeah, uh, people will pick up the ground in different forms. Uh, in my case, I allow images from there, which is different than mental images in, up in my head and out there someplace. Uh, uh, it's like I sense an image, and uh, that's one way I, I pick it up. I'm going to image a deeper ground. Uh, it feels uh, dark and kind of thick. It's about four inches thick, and it's kind of dark. Uh, the sense of it is it's either a very thick wood or the beginning of a metal, uh, a metal bar uh, that I can stand on. And, and I, I get an image about that. So that's one way that I pick it up. I allow imagery in my experience. And that facilitates for me. You might have a different form. But or whatever you can do with that. Did I miss anything on what you said? No, no, thank you very much for that. It added, um, it added new insight and new ways into it for me. Oh, now I remember. When I uh, used to first major in, in this base, the pattern that would show for me uh, was first the ground, then as I settled and got a little bit deeper, there would be like a fertile ground, a finer soil under the first surface of, of ground. So I'd be at the second level. I'll, I'll call it second now. I don't quite remember the exact sequence. But the fertile ground uh, gave me a sense that the energies were like fertilizer. They were enhancing me and energizing me. So fertile ground energies coming up. I felt more enhanced and a little more vibrant. Okay, uh, someplace again, I forget the exact sequence, but someplace there, there'd be another one deeper, which was, uh, I, I called it bedrock. So this very firm, strong, rocky 
something and standing there and the energies that came from there of course i felt stronger and fuller it was bedrock if i were going to throw somebody over my back that would be the first base boom that would be the first base bedrock under uh and i could support all kinds of weight up here because of that support uh again i forget the exact sequence but as uh, soon after that would be a fiery kind of ground, uh, kind of like a internal volcano lava flow. And there'd be a lot going on because I'm in a much finer dimension when I hit that fiery and a lot of things would happen. The purification of fire, uh, all kinds of things by hanging out with that one. So again, I forget the exact sequence, but I used that one when I was first uh, studying, experiencing the different levels. That's one way it showed to me. Ah. Uh, so uh, does anybody else uh, wanna ask Sensei a question uh, on this idea of this standing exercise? I'm really myself doing it while we're watching. Uh, I hope you are too, but uh, before we move on, call for other questions. Just unmute your microphone and your talk. Yeah, Sensei. Um, once you come from and you uh, and you stand and you pick up whatever is whatever happens to be there. How do you know when you're ready? To, uh, to leave that and settle back down to, to begin again? Okay, good, good question. Uh, you, ha you continue the experience. Be careful of the word know. How do you know? Careful where you go with that word, okay? I don't want to shift into awareness of. If you're hanging out with the uh, fullness of the last character and you're just feeling it and you pump it a bit breathe it a bit if you would pulsate with it as it there'll come a time where you kind of just know <laughs> where it just feels like I, I can't get much more out of this continuing pumping i feel pretty good there I have a sense there's more, just a sense there's more. That would tell me it's time to go for, for next. So there's no set rule, just experience. And within that experience should be the thing itself saying, this is it at this level. And some sense of, let's move on, there's more. Thank you. And just to remind you, because we've done this over and over, is this okay position? Is this, uh, this technique, for example, uh, down to the ground. From the ground, the energies come up through the body. And that's how I like to present that, as opposed to, okay, here's a technique, and if you do this and, and twist there, you'll get them. Uh, that's... For, for me, me out, out there, there nonsense. nonsense. It's, a, it's, it's a different, different art. It's not O Sensei's Aikido. He, he is helping, helping me by pressuring me in this form to catch a better ground so the energies can fill up the system and change, make it a better system that later will function better. Thank you. <clears throat> <clears throat> okay, where so, are we? So, Sensei, uh, you know when I when you just said that that the uh, your your partner is gives you some pressure to help you find a better center in the form of a waza, but it it's right now I'm feeling like the pressure from the coronavirus and the alarm bells that are running throughout the society are, are in a good day 
helping me find a better center. Yeah. On a bad day, they're they're frightening. Yeah. Can you speak you, to you this? Might, okay. I I I want to head there, but I think not yet. That I want to take a different approach with the question you're sort of asking. Let's keep this to personal energies and not uh, deal with the out there world too much. Deal with an UK or something uh, or personal, I want to stand better. Uh, but let's hold off on that Corona thing because I think that's something else happening here. Okay. We'll get to it in a few minutes. So since I, uh, yeah, so this is Dennis again. So I've been following along with the exercises. I've been like doing it. And I, I think I have a pretty good base. How do I know if I'm standing here in my living room by myself, how do I know that I have a good base if I don't have a partner to? Uh, feeling, experience. If you're actually feeling experience, you ought to be able to grade yourself with that. If you're thinking about it, if you're aware of it, then you'll never know because there's no experience there. You're off someplace else looking at this activity from afar. It is not the activity. Uh, let's see. Let's see if Kenny can catch me here. Uh, can you catch my feet here? Sure. Okay. On the wood. On the wood. If just back up one more step. Good. We can't quite see your feet. Back, back. Okay. That's good. Okay. Yep. So here's a, a stance, okay? All right. Now I'm at home alone. Easy, settle, open. That's my lineage now, that stance. Easy, settle. Boom. Okay. Now this one felt, I experienced this foot is deeper. And there's a bit on this left foot too, but I really noticed that foot was deeper. Okay. I experienced it, I felt it. If I step and go mental, I don't know. I'll never know, never. <laughs> I can make up stories, but you know they're gonna be bullshit. <laughs> Right. Of course I'm great. <laughs> How come Sensei doesn't make me a nanny nanny Don? <laughs> because your idea of what's happening and what's happening are two different stories. <laughs> right, well that's the real trick, isn't it? It's like, that's like meditation. You can trick yourself into thinking you're meditating when you're daydreaming. Or you think you guys like, but without a partner to calibrate yourself against. Well, you can take that into consideration and utilize it, figure whatever you do, first there's going to be awareness of it. But now you know there is awareness of it, and you go, okay, and the experience of it, the feeling of it. And you get a little something in the experience. Now you know you're aware of it again. That's okay. Back to, and more experience. So after a bit, the per, it's a percentage game. The percentage of the experience is very high. The percentage of the awareness of gets less and less and nil. So we shouldn't make awareness our enemy. Uh, it's the way we're kind of built as human beings for a while. Uh, but to practice catching the difference between aware of and experiencing. And I do it, I call that a percentage game. Okay. Is that, does that help any? You just have to play with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it, it, so there's nothing precise about it. But when mm. you think you're, when, well, when, you, when you're good enough, it's good enough to go on to the next stage. You don't have to be perfect, right? No. It's like gov government work, close enough, it's good enough. <laughs> yeah. But Osente did say be orderly. Don't be sloppy. So, so some place between don't be sloppy and don't try to worry about perfection because you probably won't move along. Those are words from O Sensei. Right. Thank you, Dennis. Does anybody else want to open a dialogue here with uh, Nado Sensei? 
just unmute your mic and speak. Uh, it's Lisa here. I just wanted to thank you for a really timely reminder. The way you said that your UK's pressure or stress was helping you find a new center, because as my now teenage UK, UK daily UK, um, as there's stress in that meeting, I forget that it's a new system that I can find a center in. So that's a very helpful way into being in a system rather, if, if you, than, rather than reacting to when. If you think about how we train, Percy holds me, uh, I'm fairly new, okay? I'm a new kid in the dojo. And he holds me light medium, okay? Now I get some energy and if I move right, properly, he'll accept that and say, oh, good boy, okay? Then as I progress a bit, he puts more pressure on me. He squeezes harder, he gets fuller, so that I have to open to more energy, okay? If I do well, he says, oh, good boy. If I think about it and try to do it, he won't let me. He's not trying to screw me over. He's just saying, no, don't go there. Don't go into that mental whatever, okay? And as we progress, he continues to increase the pressure and I continue to deal with it, okay? Then we move along and he'll be coming in with movement. And it's like movement with that same thing. Uh, so if you think about how you train or how we should train maybe, uh, we gently increase the pressure, helping you to practice settling, opening, and letting the energies improve your system so that you can function better. So, um, so when, this, when I, again. let me throw in, when I used to work dogs and I had uh, pit dogs, they love to exercise. At a certain age, I don't, I don't remember now, say six months, we'd, I would wrap chains around them and have them run with that weight. Now, not too heavy chains, because they're young. You don't want to break them down. Just enough where they have to woof. Uh, well, that's woof of the dog and, <laughs> and, and deal with it. As they increase their their energy in their system and they got stronger, I would put heavier, thicker chains on them. But always being careful to stay with what they could do and not bury them with chains to break them down. Okay. Uh, I'm sure, I don't know anything about horses, but if you're gonna do something with racehorses, I'm sure you don't run them for two miles at top speed they'll break down. You run them a little bit and then they rest and they get a little bit older. You run them a little bit more faster and you give them a rest and they get a little bit older and better with that. And then suddenly they can run the damn race, whether it's a how many furlongs, whatever. So it's almost a common sense thing. If you understand the energy patterns are the same for the pit dog, for you, for a horse. <laughs> Uh, I used to describe uh, energy with plants, saying you get a cold spell, a lot of the weak plants die. Weak plants? Plants? Whatever they're called. Uh, they die because it's too cold. But those that survive have learned to dig in and get more energy, if you would, so they can withstand cold seasons. And now you almost have a different uh, group Give me the right words. Speed, variety. Yeah, yeah, you have a different variety. They, oh yes, plant those seeds because they're good in the cold weather. So we sell those to Canada or Russia or something. <laughs> yeah, so even the plants in, innately have that capability. Okay. Just as people, we can be very fast with it. We, we have a real advantage. Uh, but in the animal or plant kingdom, it'll eventually happen. It may take 
hundreds and thousands of years, but it will happen. What's that called? Evolution. Evolution. Uh, we can beat that system out. We, we have access to direct as you, if you get towards those sensei's level, you have direct access. Uh, but we can be pretty fast at, at this. Yeah. Uh, Nado Sensei, we have about uh, another 20 minutes, and I wonder if you might lead us in uh, standing uh, breathing. Uh, ah, I don't know if I feel like breathing. Let's see. Or something else as you choose. Uh, let's see. Well, let me, let me hang out. I haven't breathed for a while. <laughs> breathing. Okay, let's see. Basic. Exhale. <clears throat> I'm going to do this form here. Exhale. I'm doing the same thing. I, I just no, notice I'm settling down a little deeper. And from that, I'm inhaling. So I'm doing the same practice with that base. Uh, but instead of using the standerer for a reference, I'm using breathing. And because this character, this body, has breathed better, ah. I feel a little more awake. My cheeks feel like they got a little extra color in it. It just feels warmer. I feel a little more vibrant, just a bit, but I feel vibrant. Again, do not come over here and think about it and be, I uh, can't use mindful, they use it different, um, aware of. Won't do you any good. The experience of the experience of. So down, exhaling to a particular floor. From there, open, open. Here it comes, you're inhaling. And again, I could check, ah, see if anything's changed. I feel a little bit wider. I can't prove that, but it feels feels wider, like I have lats. <sighs> My nasal assembly feels a little cleaner. I can feel that, breathe that. My nasal whatever, if I had nasal congestion, it would be starting to lessen right now. So using breathing to rep for the energies is the game that I'm playing now. Uh, let's see. Eventually in there, exhaling down, ground, open. Here comes the inhale, it's energies. Definitely my face feels brighter. My eyes are starting to sparkle a little bit. Like I just took a dr half a drop of marine, marine, urine, that stuff, yeah. an eye drop, just getting a little sparklier. Ah, that was easy to make that sound. That's the sound of this character experiencing his experience. Ah, I'm here. I'm alive. I'm ready for whatever we're going to do. Now, but there's something else in there. As we continue breathing, there'll be uh, soon or eventually, there'll be, there'll be that pause where you exhale, inhale, and someplace there'll be a pause. That could be a real good time for core, the beginning of core self. That pause is a different unit. It's not the exhale, it's not the inhale, it's somebody else, <laughs> something else, self. At first, I'm, that may not be clear to you, that's why they might tell you to just enjoy the calm or something, but really what's there is self. At first you don't catch it because it's covered over, which is this calmness. So that's the beginning of it, but that's where it would really go. So two beats of energy, nice. What's the purpose of the balance? What's the purpose of left and right? What's the purpose of receptive positive? 
to get balance so that that third critical piece eventually can show. We call it core to start with, because that's the word people use. Okay. And eventually, as you continue, the core brings us to this very important piece of you, which is true self. And I'm getting ahead of myself here. It's getting a little advanced for right now, but there you go. <laughs> Thank you very much, Sensei. Okay. Uh, we have a few I, minutes. Anybody want to uh, comment uh, uh, on what we've just gone through? I myself have just kept, uh, you know, practiced along with Sensei. I can feel it. Uh, anybody else want to comment? Somebody who hasn't said anything yet? Yeah, it's Blader here. Um, yeah, I like that core a lot just now, especially on the, I was, it was on my inhale at the top with the pause. <clears throat> then I started to um, connect it on the exhale. And it was a profound shift of um, really filling myself and my body up uh, from as below as, as far down as I could currently connecting. It was the, fascinating. Yeah, the lower would be a better introduction to core self. Uh, did I, did you catch that? Uh, yes, I admitted you, okay. but yes, I did catch that, thank you. Oh, since I said, if the, if you root, which is one hell of a deep base, a la O Sensei, if the core is at the root, wow. And I forget his exact words are written on the board in San Francisco, but I'm blank on what exactly he said. They'll grow a tree that will tower over a human. That is metaphor for you being very special. You're the tree also. If your core goes very deep, realizes its truer self, uh, wow has a lot of effect. So yeah, uh, yeah deeper uh, uh, sense eventually as you pick up core can't hurt. Thank you. I had a question, Sensei. The, this is Amy. Um, I was, you had breath breathing in on the going down and I was experimenting no, no, different no. ways. Does it matter? If breath is... Well, I was exhaling on the down. Oh, exhaling. Okay. So is, does it matter? I was experimenting with both ways. Uh, oh, since I would say on things, I'm not sure about the breathing, but on everything else, he'd say, because uh, I asked him many times about different patterns. Mm -hmm. And uh, what his often answer was, was just be um, constant. Okay. Uh, if you're going to do something, then use that. Uh, unless something really happens in your system that, that says, no, no, it's the other way. But other than that, just mm -hmm. be uh, consistent. There you go. Consistent was the word that he used. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because uh, uh, there's a couple of things where I wasn't sure which one was the uh, male of the universe or which one was the female of the universe. Uh, and... Uh, we usually would say, just be consistent. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> <clears throat> like he yeah, had chants. Yai yu ye yo, mami mu me mo. Those represent two different main pieces of creation. <clears throat> and I'd say, well, uh, I forget what I'd ask him, which is first or, or uh, which is which? And he said, whatever you like, just be consistent. So I like Ya Yi for, for the body character system. So I use Ya Yi. Mommy is the realm I'm in, the universe I'm, I'm in. And that chant is to harmonize those two, which they're trying to do, but they need room and a non interfering eye. Easy the eye, open there. The truer self will allow that to happen. 
So anyway, he, he would say that many, many times, just be consistent. Okay? Okay, thank you, Sensei. Sure. Uh, I think I wanted to, because of the times, go back around to Lauren's question about the uh, uh, illness, the corona. <clears throat> I've been talking to a couple of people, and this came up in one of the conversations. Um, I've used the expression downtime. Uh, I hope everybody out there is sort of aware of how I use it. Uh, a, a, a time, I can do it here. We, we have downtime here. You know, it's, I've been working hard. I need to sit on the couch for a half an hour. That's downtime. Uh, I worked hard all day. I really need a good night's sleep. That's downtime. Uh, I've been working for six months, boss. I need a week off. That's downtime. Okay, so we utilize it. I don't think we've ever been taught the real, more real of it. That it's part of the system of the system in this case means how the creation created and functions. Uh, so you personally can have downtime when you have to rest and you can't always exhale. You have to inhale sometimes, right? Uh, but there are times, which is right now where the world we're in seems to be on downtime. And I don't care how you feel personally, the world is forcing on us a downtime. It's like it's saying, no, you can't go out. No, you can't go hold ha hands with your friends. You can't do Aikido. You can't congregate. No more dances, no more basketball games, and on and on. So the world is, seems to be in a downtime mode, modality. Okay. Now, again, because we've never been taught anything about downtime, we don't have too much awareness of it in the human condition. It's, and it's probably scary for a lot of people because down time, down, down into this deeper, deeper under area is scary for a lot of people. Uh, it's dark for some people. It's uh, empty for some people. Uh, there are monsters in the down. I mean, Jaws lives there. <laughs> Why do you want to go down there? That's where Jaws lives. Okay? So, uh, in the human condition, we're a little afraid. A lot of people are afraid of down, of dark, of hush, uh, calmer than calm. <laughs> That's what calm really means, really go down. Anyway, a lot of people are, uh, don't want to go there. They have a fear of it because they're used to an upper light world. They're used to the upper half of things, the mind of things, but not the deeper body of things. So we have that problem. Okay. But again, the situation, the world, the universe is pushing us into a downtime. When we stop and think about it, it's like, of course, I, I can't go anywhere. They won't let me teach. Uh, they won't let me congregate. <laughs> right? They won't even let me go to my office if that's where I work. Okay? <laughs> so it's kind of an enforced downtime. Now, most of us will suffer through it and bitch about it or whatever, whatever. I think... If we were smart, we'd realize that this other part of creation, the realm, uh, again, I use uh, situation, the realm, the universe, that half, if you would, of creation, it's all as the same thing. It's downtime. Now, generally, the <clears throat> purpose, let go of everything you've got. Settle down. Let go. 
Don't be Bobby anymore, or Robert, or Nado, or hey, I'm the best teacher in the county. Let go. Die down. Die. We're afraid of dying. <laughs> this is a metaphoric dying, but it still feels like dying sometimes. And if you do that properly into the deeper, quieter, darker, if you would, of the under, let's call it underworld. There's another scary word, right? Underworld. But if we descend into that, eventually we'll hit a base or a blip of light at that level. And from that level, there'll be a resurgence, a brand new, uh, kind of a potential major jump. I was thinking today when I was mulling on this for a minute, people that are on the verge of death, they almost die or they're, they're right on the edge of crossing over, but they revive, survive. You've read stories by those people. Almost all of them after that experience had a whole different view on life. Their philosophy was different. You see, if, they, if that situation was their downtime and they touch something and then boom, here comes the next upsurge, of course it mixed up a whole different character. Them has a different philosophy. So you've read those stories and every one of them I'm sure would have said, oh yeah, I don't look at the world the same way. So I think that's a minor example. I like that example. I'm proud of myself for thinking about it. <laughs> That's right. Over there. And so we're moving the chair. Hang on a sec. Actually, Sensei, oh. we're right at the end of the of the time that we reserved for this yeah. wonderful session. I want to thank you so much for agreeing to do this. I, I I myself found it really meaningful and helpful, and. Uh, yeah. I see that there are 40 people plugged in right now. And I, I hope, Sensei, that you'll agree uh, next week to do another one of these uh, scheduled to be determined. Uh, but uh, as I said in the beginning, and I, uh, this is a way for the, the dojo community to stay connected, for us to, as individuals, to stay, keep going with our practice to keep our relationship with each other and with our sensei. Um, it seems to me- See, I, right Let now, me interject. Please. The practice is not like a, too many people think out there throwing them, throwing them better. The practice from O sensei always has been internal, inner finer development of who you really are. And the throwing and stuff is just uh, if you're doing better, then the throw should be better. But like we almost don't care about that. Let's let's get this inner, and you'll get the outer. That's what he tried to show people by being so magical, so masterful, so powerful, so unbelievable. Was look at I'm doing this from inner work, <laughs> and look at what happens. And here you guys are out there trying to build up more muscles and get faster out there. And that's not where he was coming from. He tried to tell them, but they're them being human beings. People, of course, didn't listen. <laughs>